What's up guys? Adam Frater here. Today's video we are going to be discussing the top five mistakes that I see people making in calisthenics. Now these mistakes are not just limited to beginners. I see people that have been practicing calisthenics for years still making these mistakes. And it'll be the reason why you're not increasing in strength, in your skills, or seeing changes in your physique. Stop making these mistakes. This video, I'm gonna dive into the top five, but I'm not gonna just explain it because you've probably heard these things before. I'm gonna break down why. Why you don't wanna make these mistakes. As an athlete, as someone who's trying to progress and grow, I'm gonna explain every reason why this is gonna limit your ability to progress. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for having not posted a YouTube video for over a month. I know we've been in Corona. I know I've built up a lot of you subscribers starting to rely on my videos. I apologize. I was moving apartments, getting a new studio space, um, and I'm so thrilled finally living by myself. I'm surrounded by all of this lush greenery, so I'm gonna be training in my videos with all my beautiful plants around me. Stay tuned, let's dive into the top five mistakes that I see in calisthenics. All right, number one. The first mistake that I see, not just in calisthenics, in bodybuilding, really in all kinds of fitness, and this really is specific to beginners, is focusing on reps over form. Now before you roll your eyes, I know you've heard that a million times, form is everything, blah, blah, blah. Don't skip forward in this video. The reason that you don't wanna focus on reps is because reps don't matter. You've heard me say this before, reps are for you. You're only counting for yourself. You don't need to impress anybody else. Oh, I could do 50 push-ups, or I could do bench press however much weight for X amount of reps. You're on your own journey, you're your own size, you're your own frame, you're your own muscle composition, so you're on your own journey, reps don't matter. But when you cheat form and you just try to get as many reps as possible, you're actually creating one, muscle imbalances in your body, and two, you're not actually building the range of strength in a movement. Here's an example, push-ups. Here's a good solid push-up all the way down, all the way up. I used everything from my scapula, triceps, shoulder, my core is tight, all the way up and through. Full push-up rep. If I'm going for 30 reps of push-ups, obviously I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna be here like this. How many people do I see? And they're throwing the head because they just wanna get as many reps as possible or they're looking like this. Well, you're getting the reps, but you're not getting the reps of the exercise that you should be doing. That's not even a push-up anymore. You're not properly targeting the chest. You're not properly targeting the triceps. So you're not gonna progress. And the same thing is with pistol squats. I see people that just want a pistol so bad. So they're like this, but their knees sinking over their foot. And they're, I mean, honestly, you're gonna be causing knee problems. You're not getting the strength that you should be getting out of that exercise. It's not efficient. So it's a no. Form over everything. When you have perfect form, then you can start stretching out your rep. Or maybe sometimes you wanna take an exercise all the way till failure. For me, failure, example push-ups, isn't when I can just kind of wiggle my way up on a last rep, you know, like that. For me, failure is when I can't do another push-up with perfect form. The minute my form falls, then I might as well just stop because I'm risking injury and I'm not getting anything out of that exercise. Form over reps. And if you focus on this, you will progress, you will avoid injury, and you won't build muscle imbalances. And the imbalance part is important. Think about chicken wing muscle ups. If you always chicken wing, one arm's gonna be doing something different from the other arm. So that's what I'm talking about. If you've ever seen somebody that has one track that's a little bit larger than the other, if you've seen people that have muscle imbalances, wonder where they came from. They came from doing things like this. They came from not focusing on form and creating these imbalances. So don't do that, that's number one. The second biggest mistake is skipping legs. Now it's a meme, we see it all across social media, never skip leg day, blah, blah, blah. A lot of that is derived from the bodybuilding community that says you should have these massive tree trunk size legs to show everybody that you focus on leg day. That's a little unnatural. That growth is a bit unnatural. That's gonna create problems in your life in itself. But if that's your desired outcome, then go for it. The reason you shouldn't skip legs is one, and I discussed this in number one, you don't wanna create muscular imbalances in the body. And I'll come back to that. But also two, training legs and training other movements actually help 
produce more testosterone in the body and it actually gets you better overall results across your entire body. So you train legs so that you can see results not just in your legs, in your whole body. But let's go back to the muscular imbalances part, right? So everything in your body is connected. My quad, I can do leg extensions all day and just target the quad and leg curls all day and just target the hamstring. But my quad is connected up my hip flexor, up my core. This is a part of the front line of my body. My hamstring is connected to my glute and connected to your lower back. If you've ever done a workout where you've had to hold something and lift your lower back, you're engaging your hamstring, you're engaging your glute, you're engaging your lower back, it's all connected. So when you target exercises for bodybuilding that are supposed to remove something out of the body and just doing your quad, yeah, that's targeting your, your muscle for hypertrophy, for growth, but that's not performance. So if you want to have an athletic body that works well performing, and in calisthenics, that's always what we're, what we're really trying to accomplish, then you need to train your legs because it's connected to your back, because it's connected to your core and your chest, and everything in your body is connected. So you will have these imbalances. If you just do upper body all day long, sure, you'll look amazing in a t-shirt, you'll look jacked. You might have skinny legs, which some people might not care about. Personally, I know that fitness men and women all have a thing for people with nice legs. Whether you're a guy, whether you're a girl, you don't want to just be t uh, upper body dominant. It doesn't look good aesthetically, but also your legs have to carry around all of this weight that you're going to put into your upper body. So if you're this big upper body and you got these tiny little legs, how are you going to be carrying around this weight? I know this looks like a ridiculous demonstration, but that's kind of the point. So you would develop back problems. You will develop more tightness in your body if you're not holistically training everything. So don't skip legs means don't skip legs, don't skip arms, don't skip core, don't skip anything. You have to train it all or you will be in balance. So that is the number two. All right, number three biggest mistake that I see in calisthenics is people are out here training tricks. They're always doing tricks on the bar, swing muscle up, swing th 360s, handstand push ups, back claps, shrink flips, blah, blah, blah. You saw it on Instagram, you're like, I wanna be able to do that. So every single time you go to do calisthenics, you train tricks. Now, I know tricks are fun. So the whole reason I got into the sport is because I wanted to be able to do this, that, that, whatever. I love doing the tricks. The problem is, your body is strong. Your body can compensate for a lot of the challenges that you put it through. But training tricks when you don't have the strength to support it on your frame is only gonna cause you problems. And talk to the majority of any calisthenics athlete, they have tendonitis in their forearms, they have inflammation in their elbows, they have inflammation in their armpits and their shoulders. And a lot of the reason is because they go right out into the sport and just start spinning a 360, grabbing the bar, which yanks their frame and pulls on their body, and they don't have that strength to really endure that. Now you could argue that it's unnatural regardless of having the strength, but the minute that you prepare your body beforehand, then you're gonna be able to endure more of this. So when you get into this sport, calisthenics is body weight training. It really is, that's what it means. Calisthenics does not mean doing muscle up 360s and doing all of these skills. That's the sport of freestyle calisthenics. If you wanna get into freestyle calisthenics, get good at calisthenics first. Perfect your pull-ups, your muscle ups, your push-ups, maybe even your handstands. Work on these static skills, build the strength, and you will be so much more dynamic and explosive when it comes to those skills. So the third mistake I always see, again, just to repeat, is people focusing on skills and not building the foundational strength necessary so that they're not getting injured and that they can have a long career in this sport. All right, the next biggest mistake that I see, and this kind of ties into the last one is, you don't prepare your body. This is a whole new sport. You need to prepare your body. If you were gonna start playing basketball, playing football, swimming, doing any sort of some, some sort of competitive athletic, you're gonna need to prepare your body for that. Now you might think, oh, I'm athletic. It's easy for me to swing around on a bar, do a handstand, do some push-ups. You're right, you might be able to, but that doesn't mean that your body isn't suffering. 
Now I know that when we all get to the calisthenics park or wherever it is that we're gonna practice, we get so excited we go right into doing things. Especially if our friends are already there doing tricks and stunts, we're so excited we dive right into it. But we don't prepare our bodies, we don't warm up. So if you can warm up before a workout, Warming up is really just sending blood across your body, heating up your muscles so they're more elastic. You don't have to do anything crazy. You just have to slightly get your body's temperature to rise. The minute your body's temperature risen, like I said, your muscles are elastic. You're gonna reduce injury significantly so if you're warmed up. And most importantly, you're gonna increase your strength drastically. We all wanna be stronger when we work out. Why limit ourselves? Spend five minutes, warm up, and you will get such a better workout. And at the end of the workout, you're not gonna be super sore before the next day, before the next day. You can reduce your soreness if you warm up. But that's not the only way to prepare the body. It's not just warming up. It's doing the foundational skill elements I mentioned before to build strength for the sport. And it's also doing things such as foam rolling, ice baths, stretching, really starting to prepare the body in, in every way for the things that you're doing. In calisthenics, I know that my armpits, my shoulders get really tight from all the overhead pressing, all the push-ups. When you do a lot of push-ups, your chest gets tight. When your chest is tight, it's hard to reach overhead. When your lats are tight, it's even harder to extend and reach overhead. So I roll that out. If I roll out my lats, my chest, my hip flexors, if I loosen up all of these muscles, I can create more space in the body, and then I can go train in that space and develop even more strength across a wider range of motion. And I do this in between every workout to reduce recovery time and to open up that body like I explained. So, pick that up. That's number four biggest mistake is that people don't prepare your body. So prepare yo Number five is to rest. Do you know how many questions I get from people asking, is it okay to do 100 push-ups a day, every day, and 100 pull-ups a day, every day? Sir, if I rest, will I not get gains? Um, how many days per week should I work out? Six or seven, should I do two a day? It's like, everybody wants to do so much, which that's amazing if you can be disciplined enough to do all of that. But the truth is, one, you don't need to do that much exercise to get results. Too much is too much, less can be more sometimes. And the reality is, your body needs to rest to get stronger. And I know some of you have experienced this. You've ever worked out really hard for a month or two and then gone on vacation or taken a week off because maybe you injured a different part of your body. And in that week, you didn't do anything. You came back to working out and all of a sudden you're stronger than you've ever been. I took the last like month off, I have not been training very hard, and I went to do handstand push-ups. And I did more reps than I had done before I had taken this time off. Not more reps than I had ever done, but I hadn't done that many reps in a long time. And it's because your body is holding inflammation. It really is. You might feel good and not realize that under your skin, deep in your muscles, in your fascia, you're inflamed from training all the time. Well, why do we train? We train to get stronger. So after we train, we rest so that we can put that training to work. People think resting is losing gains. No, resting is the second piece of the puzzle. You train to get stronger, you rest so that you can actually use all of that strength that you gained, and then we're stronger. Not, maybe not one rest day per week, maybe not two. Every, you need to find your balance based on whatever program you're following. I know that my Shredded Academy program specifically has you resting two days per week. Sometimes we even provide an option so that you can train mobility and train stretching. And that's really it. I mean, if you don't wanna rest and do nothing, do active recovery. Active recovery means be slightly active. Don't press your muscles for growth, but be slightly active to keep your circulation going and help reduce recovery time. So that is the number five biggest mistake is people do not rest. You guys understand the five biggest things that are gonna hold back your success as an athlete whether in calisthenics, whether just a bodyweight athlete, whether CrossFit, weightlifting, it really doesn't matter. Limit those five things when it comes to fitness. Do the opposite. Now you know why. My next video is gonna be very workout based since this was very lecture based. So be ready to sweat. Click on to the next video and let's get after it. Guys, this is five mistakes that you should avoid as a beginner. I'm your man, Adam Frater. Until next time.